Hello everyone, this side Ritesh. Is it, is it audible? So I think there's a time delay. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, someone would reply. So we are, we are just waiting for someone to, you know, respond. Audio is not coming, sir. Uh, guys, is is it is it coming now? Can you can you can someone please? Uh, okay, super. So I think we, we are live and now our audience is able to hear us, far. So <clears throat> first of all, you know, just wanted to know a bit about you. So uh, what uh, I mean, which standard do you study? Which school do you go? And uh, what is this? You know, Arduino programming craze have come from? Uh, sir, currently I'm in 10th standard uh, and I'm studying in Saint Francis ICSE school. Okay. Which is here in Boring And basically I had developed my craze of Arduino when I was somewhat in 6th standard at the age of 11. Achha. At that time, like, uh, my father had gifted me some DIY projects, uh, suit kits, which I had done. And then after that I developed my interest in that and I moved further on in this field. Okay, super. So, I mean, your father uh, initially I mean, gave you an Arduino and then you, you started. So, uh, uh, yes. also, you know, one more question, I mean, now, you know, I mean, uh, uh, many kids, you know, they, they are, they are, uh, they want to uh, join, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, they want to do a lot of coding courses or they, they want to uh, somehow, you know, I mean, learn all these things. So, I mean, just wanted to know how easy it is and does it really helpful for, you know, I mean, your mainstream studies when it comes to maths, physics, science? Uh, it's like really helpful in even day to day life and also studies. Like in maths and physics, like uh, in maths we have chapter ahead known as permutation combination. So it's somewhat related to programming and it has most practical applications in everyday life. So like you can make different things. Just like uh, with Arduino, you can even make just like uh, today I am make I have made a wireless switch using an infrared sensor. So just like that, it has got many applications. Okay. So I mean, you have been keep. So I mean, uh, uh, so what would be your suggestion to you know? I mean, kids and schools who are watching. So I mean, because now because you are in ten, and you might plan to go say in engineering or mean any other field. But then uh, this is helpful to you in any way. I mean, to you know learn new things or to think you know ultimately uh, you know one of the app uh, which you know you would teach today. To use real bat and in the virtual environment. So yeah, I mean all this thinking process. So I mean, does it help? Uh, yes, sir, it does help. Like just like you mentioned that today we are going to make a program which is on a virtual period, which is a need of the hour. Right. Like today we are all locked down in the homes, and still we can play cricket using this program of virtual cricket. Super. I think uh, we have many audience, you know, who would like to play cricket, but then because of lockdown they are unable to do so. And might be you know using your uh, programming skills and then something you would teach. So uh, just you know uh, uh, this would be now f next ten minutes and you know you would be the commander uh, you know after this. So because this is a lengthy program, uh, uh, it would take two sessions. So first session would be today and the second session would be on Monday, right? Yes, sir. That's true. Super. So now uh, uh, you can you know probably uh, take the screen and and you know I mean. You can start teaching them. You can talk to them. I would be here anytime if you need my help. You can just call. Uh, okay. Sure, sir. Okay. All the best. All the best. Thanks. Thank you, sir. So basically, today we are all going to make a virtual cricket game, as Ritesh sir had mentioned. So basically, this will require some parts. I just let you know. Uh, so today we are going to make a virtual cricket game and I have my own YouTube channel toolkit. I will tell you about it soon. So basically we will require a few materials. That's we will require an Arduino Uno, a real cricket bat, the cable of Arduino Uno, the a rainbow wire, approximately 4 to 6 meters. That is to make a connection between this MBO6050 sensor and the Arduino and some connector jumper wire. 
So these materials we are going to require. For some of you who do not know about MPU 6050, I'll just give you a brief about it. Uh, it's basically a gravity sensor which can determine the orientation of an object. It is also called uh, accelerometer and it has an in inbuilt gyroscope. Uh, it, suppose, it supports an input voltage from 3 volt to 5 volt of DC current. And we and in this project, we'll mainly use this six pins, that is VCC for the power, ground, SCL, HDA, ADO, and INT. Uh, if you have not, if you don't have these parts, don't worry. Uh, we are going to mainly deal with these parts on Monday, and today we are going to do the programming part of it. So you can keep it ready till that time. So, and this is just a circuit diagram, which I'll be sharing you, sharing it to you. This is the circuit diagram and this is my channel okay so now i'll just uh, show you that how our project will be and what will be its final result so i've just kept a video so this will be a virtual cricket game and we, we can control it in real life using the cricket bat and also adds a lot of sound effects. Super, so Parth, I mean, just, you know, out of curiosity. Uh, so, uh, basically here, uh, I mean, you would be actually playing the shot and in the, in the, in the computer, it would uh, take the same shot and, and, and we will get the graphics, is it? Yes, sir. basically, uh, when we hit a shot using the cricket bag, the uh, MPU 6050 accelerometer will determine that in which direction are we hitting it. Okay, okay. Superb, superb. I think uh, uh, kids would, uh, you know, love to learn it and then probably apply. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, sir. So now uh, 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 we are going to, this will be based on Python. So uh, if you don't have, if you have not yet installed Python, I would suggest you to do it. And for uh, easily using Python and for more user-friendly interface, I'm going to install this app known as Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is an app which is free and you can install it. So this is that app. Yeah. So you can install it it's for Windows and Mac and Linux all. So just install this and then we'll move further on. Uh, uh, there's a link in the description uh, in which contains this folder. Uh, there will also be a Python and an Arduino file uh, which I'm going to explain and we are going to make it today. Uh, so this has some images which we are going to use in our entire game. Uh, and you can also like customize your own images and edit them with this some extra files. So I've just kept them. And these are all the sound effects. I've kept all the sound effects over here. So now I will uh, in this folder. I'll just do shift. I'll press shift and I'll click, uh, do right click. And then I'll select on this option of to open PowerShell window. So now when, once I do that, this window will open and when I'll type code space dot, just a minute it's loading, yeah. when I'll type code space dot and press enter, it will automatically open the Visual Studio code in this folder. So this is loaded and now it will automatically open this Visual Studio code. And this is the screen of the Visual Studio code. It's a welcome screen and by chance if you are not able to do that, do that you can manually just select it i'll just close this powershell window yeah so now uh, one thing you have to do is that in the settings uh, in settings uh, just a second Uh, 
just search for running terminal and make sure that this option is ticked uh, and I just forgot to mention that you need to install a thing known as code runner not over here sir over here you have to install this thing known as code runner this will basically run our python code so just install it and then go to the folder I'll create a new file now we have to create our python file which I'll name as code.py so this is our python file and now we require some external libraries so for that uh, I'll first write the names of the libraries so we are going to use pygame then from pygame.locals I will import star then I'll import serial which will establish a connection between Arduino and Python then I'll import time which is used to keep delays between various things and then I'll import SYS and one last thing that from random I will import Rand int. So basically, we need to get the runs randomly. So for that, I'm using this rand int, which will generate random integers. So if you don't know how to install this external uh, libraries, I'll just show you. Just go to terminal and then write pip install the name of the library. For example, pygame. And then just press enter. So if it is not installed, it will automatically install and if it is already installed, so it will either show that requirement already satisfied or it will update it. So just give it a minute. See it's showing requirement is already satisfied. So now we'll move ahead. Okay, so now I'm just going to create this blank variable known as game sprites uh, in which I'm going to store all the numbers for the uh, scoreboard then FPS will be 32 that is the frame rate of the game I would not like to like it to exceed 232 and then the screen that is our main window it will be uh, pygame dot display dot set mode to uh, the dimensions of, of the window which you require I am using this dimensions 1550 and uh, by 850 you might question that why I am not using 1960 by 1080 that is because when if I use that dimensions uh, then the upper, ta upper uh, window bar which will be there of the window that will also require some space so some part of a game will be hidden so by trial and error I have found this dimensions and now I will move ahead so now I will just write I will just write if underscore underscore name underscore 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 is equal to main or double underscore main double underscore this means that whenever I, uh, my file is running in short so pygame dot init this will basically uh, activate the pygame and then I'll write fps clock equal to pygame dot time dot clock so this will initialize the frame rate and then I write by game dot display dot set caption underscore caption to I will just write 
virtual click it quote all the images so now the intro background i'll just save it intro bg it will be i game dot image dot load and then it will be uh, now i'll write the location and the name of this image so it is in a folder known as image then a slash and then the name of this image which is back dot jpg and then to edit these images i have to convert it into alpha so i'll just write convert underscore alpha so similarly i'll just load all the other images so i'll just copy paste it then i'll import the second intro background which is saved as back to and then i will save our main background uh has the name pitch.jpg then I will import these two. One is the ball. That is a cricket ball. That is a PNG file. So I will just change this JPG to PNG. So then the pause image. That is whenever I press the pause button. That is P. So it will display this image of pause. I'll just write pause.png. Uh, in the folder image, you can find all of these images and other things. Uh, I'll just remove this. Okay. So now most of our images are PNG added, so I'll just copy this again. So then the next, uh, this game will contain two types of virtual shots. One is the straight drive and one is a sweep sweep shot so straight one image that's a batch when hitting the straight shot i will write straight hit dot pg straight hit dot png and then the other one which is a sweep shot i will just write it as These are basically all these names are just the names of the image which I am writing in the inverted commas. So now uh, basically I have made various images for the left shots and the, uh, that is the shots in the left side and the right side as you had just seen in the video. So I will just write bg underscore 1 comma 2 l that will contain the background for all the singles and the double shots in the left hand side. So that I will write as igame.image.load then 1 2 bg left dot png I have saved it as this name and all of my these background images are of the same dimensions that is 1550 by 850 pixels so that won't cause any issue as all of them are of the same size so now similarly I'll make for I'll keep for 4 6 that's the boundary line and for out so I'll just store it as out L and for obvious I also have to change from here so this will be 4 6 left and out left so now similarly we have to also create the variables for uh, images for right hand side so i'll just copy and paste this entire thing over here and just replace all the lefts by the all the lefts by the rights and this all the l by the r's okay so so far we are good if you have any questions at any time, you can just post it in the chat uh, and then I'll just write one that is 
uh, after every shot, the number of runs which I have scored in that shot, it will be displayed on the screen. So I'll uh, so like if I have scored one run, so the number one will be displayed on the screen. That one run you have scored just now. So again, I'll just paste. No, sorry, I'll just copy this, paste it, and this will be like image slash one run. And now, similarly, I have 1, 2, 4, 6, and out. So I'll just paste it then. So I have 2, 4, 6, and one more. Uh, I am scoring out as, uh, I am storing out as 0. You can also store it as out, uh, but then you will also have to change it at the place where we are using it ahead. So now I'll just replace here also. So two, four, six, and this I have stored as zero out the image. Okay, so now uh, basically in the scoreboard between the runs and the wickets, I have kept a uh, hyphen. So basically that I'll store in variable dash, that's a dash sign. I'll just paste it again so it will be dash.png and then uh, where I'm displaying the target in numbers I'm uh, right I have to display the word target also sorry for that I have to display the word target also so that I've stored in a uh, variable known as target i that is the image of the target. Uh, yeah, so I'll just write target.png and then uh, all the numbers which I'm going to use for the scoreboard, I'll store it in variable game underscore sprites which I had initialized earlier and in that uh, I'll just write numbers. So that's the numbers all we are going to use. And then I'll just open a big bracket. And then I'll just write pygame.image.load. See this and paste it inside this. And it will be like 0.png and in the end I put a comma as it's an array so I'll just copy, copy it paste it yeah paste 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 so it will contain all the digits from 0 to 9 so the 0 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, this is an extra one, so I'll just delete it, yeah, so now we have almost uh, two more are left images, so now an image known as win, that is when you win, it will show winner screen, so I have stored it in a variable win, so that will be pygame.image.load and then victory.jpg dot jpg that is the name of the image and then more image known as over that's basically game over so I'll keep it in and the name of the file is game over dot jpg yeah. so now so far we are good i'll just save it uh, after you make a change you have to save it save this file otherwise uh, it will not uh, detect any changes in the program so now i'll just run the code to just see that whether we have made any errors so far
Okay, it's taking some time. Okay, so there's some error over here in intro VG image back.jpg. not open image okay so let me just see it so this is okay it's images so that was the error set by images and i'll click this button to replace all the, yeah okay. i'm sorry mm -hmm. as it will also change the pike game dot image upload so i have to do it manually i forgot it so i'll just do images everywhere I'll just change everywhere in this bracket from image to images. Now I'll again save it and try to run. Yeah, so now there was no error. There was Okay, just let me see one minute. There seems to be some error. Just a minute. Okay, so I'll just try writing this while to uh, just to see, find out the error. And I'll just write screen dot blit. That is, it will blit on the screen when at zero comma zero. So now this will just find it if there's any error. There is some error over here. Intro PG over here. Just a minute. Just give me two minutes. There seems to be some error. I'll just find it. I'll just see in my pro other program which I had made earlier. So I'll just find out the uh, error. I'll just open the, my original file. Just see the error. was a very silly mistake. I have written this wrong spelling of convert. So I will just replace all the convert alpha by convert alpha. Okay. So I will just replace all of them. So that looks good and now I will save it and try to run. Hoping that this time there won't be any error. So this is a window. This is the virtual cricket. That is the name of the window. Yeah, uh, that that's okay. I understood that why it's not responding. I'll just delete this for now. Remove it. 
uh, it was not responding because of a problem. I'll, you'll, I'll let you know in the course of time. So now uh, I'll just create a function known as welcome screen. That is whenever I start the program, uh, it will show this welcome screen function. I'll just add this. Oh uh, yeah. And now I'll create this. I'll define welcome screen. So now I'll just create a forever loop. That's while true. That's a forever loop. So for uh, a variable event in I came dot event dot get uh, yeah so if the event dot type is quit so basically this function will find every event which is uh, occurring in the display that is uh, like any mouse clicks or if I press any keyboard buttons so just like that so even if event dot type is quit, that is if I press the S, uh, this quit button that's in the top right corner, or if the event dot type is key down, that is if I press a key downwards, so then and the and uh, sorry event dot key is k underscore escape so that means that whenever i press down the escape key so it will run this thing or it will carry out this function that is my game dot quit and then sys dot exit that is it will close the window and it will quit back so it will run like this and else for now uh, it will just i just write screen dot lit that is it will lit on screen the intro bg at the coordinates 0 comma 0 and then i game dot display dot update uh, since we have not written this line by game to display dot update down, so that is why it was showing that it is not responding. And then FPS clock dot tick at the FPS. So now I'll just save and run this. Yeah. So this is our window. This is a close button. So this is our welcome screen, there's the name virtual cricket and this is the first screen. So now I've just written that press space for the next. So that means that when I press space bar, it should go in to the next function. So now I'll write that else. I'll just copy this part. So instead of escape, I'll write space. So that whenever I press the space key, so I'll just copy this entire thing and paste it. So whenever I press space, it will go under an infinite loop. Like just the spaces, it will go under an infinite loop. It will again check that whether any event is happening. If I have pressed quit, so it will quit. Uh, else. No, I don't require this statement anymore. Uh, and then, else, what it has to do, I'll just exit, exit. So, else, it will break the intro background too. That is the second introduction background. And I'll just copy from here again. So, I'll just paste it again here. So that if I press space key one more time, so then again all the thing will happen. Mm, sorry, uh, 
if I press this, I don't, I'm really sorry. If I press this space key one more time, so then it will be return. That means it will just quit this function. I'll just run it and see. Invalid syntax. Oh, it should be else if. So similarly, it will be an error over here. Else if. Just run and see it. So the window. First welcome screen, I'll press space. Second welcome screen, I'll press space. It has quit. So we are good so far. And we have made successfully made a welcome screen. I'll just hide this and now we'll go again down over here. And after welcome screen, I'll create another function known as the main game. I'll again go up. I'll define this main game. Uh, so basically it will again keep on checking all this stuff so I'll just copy this from define welcome screen and I'll paste it over here so again while true it will check for quit and if I have not pressed quit and uh, we also need to create a pause button so else if I have pressed the pause key that is the letter P so instead of key underscore sk, I write key underscore p. So if I press the space uh, p key, so a variable pause, that's a boolean variable, it will be true. And now I'll copy this part here and paste it. So again, it will go under an infinite loop. Yeah, it will again go under an infinite loop and instead of while true, I write while pause. So which basically means till the time pause is true. So it will again keep on checking. And if I press the key P again, so then the pause will be false. Else if it is not false or anything so then it will just do screen dot lit then the pause image at the location 500 comma 350 this is ca about coming the center of the screen so I have just chosen this then I will have to write I came dot display dot update yeah and so we have created this pause function I'll just hide this part and now we'll just see that so far what's happening there's some syntax error for my bad I forgot to put colon Just a second, there seems to be some error. Oh, yeah, that was a silly error. It was not under the else, so that was some syntax error. Yeah. So now I'll just run it. So this is the screen. I'll press space by two times per second. Okay, so it has basically gone to the next, but I have not deleted any other screens, so it is not showing. So when I press the letter P, it is just showing pause. Okay. So now since it did not go because I had not done anything else over here. So now I will just write just a second. Yeah. 
So I'll just play otherwise I'll just split screen dot split. I'll split the background. Split the background to zero comma zero. Uh, you might see some errors. There are some errors for 28 problems, but just ignore them. They will not make any difference. So now, throw. Uh, yeah, so now I'll create a function throw. That is, after blitting this, it will, uh, it will uh, run a part in which the <coughs> ball is being thrown. And I'll have to write by game dot display dot update so now I'll just create this throw function so now I will define throw just a second Now I'll define throw. Uh, so xb will be 550 and yb will be 825. These are the coordinates of the ball. Uh, and I'll just uh, now I'll just write while uh, now I'll again have to do all the testing work and the pause thing. So I'll just copy this entire thing in the main game before the variable throw and just paste it here. And I'll just hide this part. So basically, what will happen here? We test for every any event. If it is quit, so to quit. If it is, if I press pause, so to pause and unpause similarly. So it will just continue like that. One second, I, I'll just hide this. So now it will just otherwise after this checking work, it will just hit the ball and the coordinates x b comma y b. I have given such coordinates because the ball is moving. So that is why the coordinates are variables. Uh, before that, I'll also have to split the background. So obviously on the background, the ball will move. Background. At 0, 0. Yeah. So now, uh, basically, what will this do? Uh, I'll just show you. Okay. I'll have to close it. As the, I forgot one very important line. I have to write everywhere that I came display update and then fps clock dot take at fps this is error so now i'll just show you that where will this blend the ball so this is a screen yeah so it's basically blending the ball over here i'll just show you yeah over down over here as you can see in the pitch so that's basically starting from outside the screen so that's why it's showing like that that so now I'll just close this. So now we have to make our ball move. I'll just shift this lines downwards. And now I'll write if xb is less than 775. So then our initial was 550. xb will be plus equal to Four, that is x will increase by 4 and yb will be minus equal to 8 that is yb will decrease by 8 so what does this mean that initially if xb is over here where the, my cursor is so it will move slowly slowly in plus 4 uh, uh, with a rate of 4 pixels and yb which is here it will decrease at a rate of 8 pixels I will just show you what we have done over here I will just press spaces yeah, so see, as you see, we are given ball of motion till this point. 
so it was in a slant motion till this point and as you can see we can pause it any time by pressing the key pause so now we are good and now I am, we are giving it like a spin so now I'll write if at that position yb is approximately somewhat near 200 so I'll copy paste this else if yb is less than 205 it is reaching somewhere a value of 200 so now xb will remain the same so I'll remove its decrement and yb will decrease by 5 so what will be the result of this see it will give us such a result so it is slow right now because of my screen share but it won't be there when you just try it by yourself and if, if you still find it to be slow you can just increase this rate of changes just like if I just do it to like just to show you I'll keep it 100 so it'll like in probably in a second it will just reach there and it might not reach in the place where we want it to reach see it just showed an error the code ran, ran differently so I'll just not change these values so we have created this function of throw now after the function throw is run it will come back over here where it was thrown so now I forgot to write one important thing over here so I will just write it in the beginning that if if yb is less than 210 that is it is re uh, reached its required position so then return so then it will return that is it will quit this throw function what does it mean i will just show you in a second it means that whenever the ball reaches here it will just quit the function yeah this was an error Spy game, not PS game. So after, as you see, after it, after the throw function is over, it just went over here, and where it detected the mistake. So we have successfully created this throw function. So now I'll move ahead. So now uh, basically there will be two types of shots, one is the sweep shot and one is the straight drive shots. I am just keeping all the straight drive shots in the right hand side and all the sweep shots in the left hand side just to avoid any confusion and to make it simple. So now I uh, will just initialize two variables, uh, in fact three or let me just initialize all. One is A, one is B, one is the hands and one is the vacants so basically A will just generate a random integer that it will determine the ratio of the runs B is, uh, I am storing it if B is 0 so it will be uh, the sweep shot and if B is 1 it will be a right side shot uh, I'll just see that what I'll uh, I'll just go ahead now so now if B sorry B are all the left shots yeah I'm sorry so uh, I'm really sorry if B is zero that means it will be the left shots with respect to the screen that is uh, in real life it will be like straight drives and if B is one it will be all the sweep shots in which the ball go right side with respect to the screen so now if B is zero which I which I have initialized it Oh, I forgot to do one important thing. I forgot to initialize all the sound effects. Yeah. So now I'll just create all the sound effects over here. I just forgot that. So now the sound of, I'll just write I'll hit S, that is a hit sound. So whenever I hit, it will just do pygame dot mixer dot sound.
as we make happy to do. So it is in the folder sounds slash hits dot wav that's a wave file and then similarly I'll just create for the others so I'll just paste it so then the sound of zero I'll show in as zero that sound of out then s4 I'm just keeping sound effects for a few runs and wickets so like it'll be s six and then the victory sound that is when I win so now it will be six and sv that's the sound of victory so now I'll just write here sorry for that yeah, I'll just write uh, this is just a second this is sound zero this is sound four and this will be sound six and this will be the victory sound yeah so this is we are so good so far and we have initialized all the sounds and uh, we will now continue from Monday since it's time up. So, Parth, I mean, uh, this was uh, for the today's session? Yes, sir. Okay. So, I mean, uh, we, we have, you know, like a couple of doubts. Uh, just a second, if we can now uh, stop the screen. Okay. Yes, screen share if you can stop. Yes. So we, we have one doubt. I mean, uh, uh, is there any uh, replacement for MPU 6050, which you, I mean, we would be, you know, probably seeing it on Monday? Uh, so there's one way in which we can use the keyboard function. Or maybe like we can use just two buttons for left shot, for a sweep shot and a straight short we can just okay. use buttons using rd so maybe uh, okay other... yeah sir yeah so sir. so uh, this would uh, i mean if we if we uh, eliminate npu 6050 so this way uh, the actual bad feeling w would go all go away right so i mean it will be on the on the computer uh, the, uh, there will be no virtual feeling it will just be like playing in a mobile or somewhat like acha, acha, acha. so ultimately we need MPU 6050 so I mean which is yes, basically right. a gyro sensor and we need Arduino and, and, and uh, a small connecting cables right yes sir so have you given the entire list I mean what all they would need on Monday yes sir this, this is the only thing really Arduino Uno MPU 6050 the, the cable of Arduino and few connecting wires That's how it. many how many connecting wires and male to female female to female what is it uh so just a second i'll just show sure, sure. uh, i'll just show the entire list together just one second you want to uh, screen share again yeah just a minute so i'll just do that just a minute So we'll totally require these all materials. Just a second. Yeah, okay. That, okay. Acha. A cricket bat. And this is like a joint rainbow wire, just like it is shown in this image. So we require five joint at least. And then about four to six meters. And uh, uh, you can also keep it less like it's according to your comfort. Acha. So to so summarize, this, uh, we need one cricket bat, <coughs> one Arduino Uno. Uh, one programming cable which is a USB cable for programming Arduino then we yes. need uh, a long cable uh, which is basically I mean which will connect uh, cricket bat and Arduino as an input so you we need a long uh, cable of 5 to 4 to 6 meters yeah and how many cores we need there I mean how many wires should be there uh, there should be 5 Acha, so five wire uh, of four to six meters, 
and uh, we yeah. need female uh, male to female about six we regard basically what we are going to do we will just cut them from between and extend them with this rainbow wire Achha. just to create uh, just to make them long okay so they would need the, maybe an insulation tape as well right yeah okay super super yeah okay i got it uh, so we can switch back yes and so you are saying that there was some doubt yeah so that was you know one doubt where uh, i mean someone wanted to ask that you know if we can replace mpu 6050 so i think that that you have already told us i mean if we if we uh, uh, i mean we, uh, remove mpu then it will be only you know using the keyboard uh, we would uh, probably we can yeah, play the game or probably some external buttons with adding okay we can give that virtual key superb and uh, the code which you have done today in python So entire code is available in the in the GitHub link which you have shared with uh, yeah, the audience, right? Yeah, the entire GitHub link. Okay, great. So all the asset, uh, music, and code, everything is there in the in the GitHub code. So probably they can come and done, done, done. Super, super. It was uh, you know really great to uh, have you today, and probably I think Monday would be more uh, fun. And for other audience, uh, 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 we uh, I mean we we are we are doing you know. like couple of more things so i mean we are running online coding classes so in case if you have kids around who are you know studying in grade 1 to 8 standard they can enroll it's a simple link which is uh, robocard.com/smartcoders uh, those are uh, paid courses on and about free courses we are running on on, on our portal uh, second most important thing uh, we are also running free i mean it's a, it's a quiz contest where uh, uh, we would get four uh, kids uh, you know live and uh, they would participate uh, and engage you know there is a stem quiz contest and entry fee is 100 rupees and winning prize is 400 so basically we do not charge anything so whoever wins takes soul you know home so these are the two things that you know we wanted to tell and if you uh, like all those content please share it with your friends you know friends teachers and school uh, you know uh, colleague yes yes par uh, i just wanted to mention two things firstly that the program which is of the python is very long about 800 lines Achha. so i would suggest everyone to just copy and keep the program file ready so that i'll just uh, explain that so that we finish otherwise it will take a lot more hours uh, right. because typing will take a lot of time yes 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 agreed so code is any which was available and this uh, little guy has his own channel which is toolkit right yes sir i'll just show one second just a second then I, we have to switch i'll just show the channel just a minute i'll just close all this uh answer for uh, i would like to thank you a lot for giving this me this opportunity to stream live over here any time any time not a problem and to all the viewers you know i mean it is really uh, uh, great for uh, you know people to i mean young kids to you know start learn coding because coding does help to you can So thank you so much, guys, for joining in today, and uh, uh, we would uh, come back probably on Monday uh, with uh, Parth, and he would take uh, you know the live action, and then we have more upcoming uh, you know session coming up, uh, which is lined up Tuesday till next Saturday. So we'll update everything on our Facebook and all other social media. Thank you so much, guys, for joining today. Thank you, Parth. Thanks again. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.